So for this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about and go through with everybody as far as uh, the basic terminology for this class. One thing that you're going to find when you work in web design and or web development is we love our acronyms. Uh, so it's not uncommon that you're going to be hearing folks using you know, terms like UI, UX, CSS, JPEG, GIF, etc. And it's not so much like only one side of web needs to know that. What can actually really help to also make you a great designer from the soft skills standpoint is being able to recognize these terms and kind of meet your web developers halfway. So I wanted to start off with a couple of terms for folks here. First being based off of some of the terms that I put in the PDF here. I want to talk about HTML and then also over here I'm going to put CSS. So each of these can kind of stand alone as far as languages go, but I do want to point out to you that it's a rarity in this day and age where somebody may go into the industry and say, oh, I work in HTML. It's really automatically assumed that they're also working in CSS. So you have kind of this chain link between both of these languages so that they can interact with each one. So HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language, and it's kind of the structural, we could call it, as far as the structural markup for a web page. HTML technically can stand all by itself. Uh, this is how all sorts of elements such as uh, paragraphs, we also have uh, headings, links, images, and so on, are placed on a website. However, it's just that. It marks up a web page and displays the information. If you want to add things such as style lingos, there are a few options that you can use. However, one of the issues as a web designer that you would run into if you decided to use that methodology is on every single HTML page or .html document, you would have to go in and edit, say, you know, if I have, uh, let's say I have the word sale but I have it on 50 HTML documents. And all of a sudden I have my boss come to me and say, hey, instead of that light green there, we need it to be red on once again, all 50 pages. So you're going into each of these pages and having to copy and paste as far as the design goes and changing that color. Well. This is actually where now, if we take this concept right here, this is where we can now come up to CSS, which stands for Cascading Style Sheets. This is a language that is used with HTML very frequently. It is literally, as far as the sheet element of it, you have a single dot CSS file that is going to go through and make and affect all of the displays and designs of your HTML documents. That might be a big topic or a big concept for right now. Bear with me on it, but it's something that whenever we go back into Dreamweaver, or if you're just watching this video and you decide that, hey, I wanna do HTML and CSS, that's something that's gonna come down later on in the line there as far as the linking and also the displays. Cascading style sheets, it has style in the name, so really it is the styling of HTML documents. There's also a whole other slew of things. Just focus right now, this is meant more for beginners in web design, focus on the HTML. So this is how we change things like fonts. backgrounds or backdrops, colors, 
whoops, shadowing, etc. I mean, we have so many different effects that we can use with CSS. So to emphasize as far as this topic is concerned here, I, I really want to drive home the fact that, and I'll go ahead and make a divide right here. In this day and age, in, in when I'm recording this 2024, we don't really talk about HTML or CSS. Instead, what we actually say is HTML and CSS. So you very much have these two linked together pretty consistently as far as design goes. So those are some of the first terms there that you may have to become familiar with. Now, another term that we also use in web design and development is you may hear your devs refer to URL. This actually stands for Uniform Resource Locator. To be honest, we you will also hear people in general This is a web address. If you think in terms of like www.google.com, that's your web address. So those are the things that we're referring to. And actually on our sheet for terminology, if I can jump ahead a little bit, the Uniform Resource Locator actually stems from where we are storing the information. So if I actually go ahead here, draw a line here, you may hear your web developers talk about server or servers. And these servers are spaces, either virtually or physically, that store websites. And to emphasize, when I'm talking about a website, this really is a folder with web pages. Now, building on that a little bit. So you have this server that is going to reference your website via a URL on the user side. And actually that would be a good note to use that this is kind of the user picking up the phone and making the phone call that then hits the server and goes to the website. Now again, you as the web designer, you are the one that is creating that. So the servers though, if you hear your devs talking about that, that's where your finalized product goes that the entire public can see. If they've got the URL, they can see your website. So also too, as far as servers go, yeah, what that means too is this is the spot where you know pretty much think in terms of with the URL the user has picked up the phone it is called the server think in terms like it's asking for your website so it's saying hello I'd like to talk to www.google.com there's a little more that goes into that and the server looks around and says, hey, I found it. And then it returns back to the user in their web browser. So those are just some of the bits and pieces here. So we looked at, as far as the two languages that tie together, how we actually get to the website through the Uniform Resource Locator, but also by using that Uniform Resource Locator, where is it actually phoning to, to get to the website that you designed, that your developers placed on a server so that it can be displayed back to your users or as we get into the next video, uh, you know, your target audience, and it displays that information to them. So again, this is kind of a two part little mini lecture. I don't want to overwhelm and just be going through tons and tons and tons of vocabulary here. So as far as this setup goes here, some of the key terms that we talked about here, let me go ahead here. We're going to hide that. There we go. 
So really from this video alone here, the big things we talked about, HTML and CSS. And as a designer, if you're using something like Dreamweaver, the odds are good you're not actually going to be writing the languages. We also talked about URL, your uniform resource locator, and also how it interacts with web servers. So those are the three biggies here that we covered in this video here. There's still several other areas and terms I want to familiarize folks with, so feel free to catch my next video on the additional terminology.